Guys, welcome back to the channel. On the last episode, we were working on, back here, our oil and suspension install that we got for the truck. On this episode, we have a special treat. We are going to be working on the interior, but not physically working on it. We are going to have a special guest, a friend, come over. Um, Mike from East Coast Additive has recently expanded his services to 3D scanning. So we are going to go ahead and get the interior of the truck and some other parts 3D scanned. Okay, so you'll notice on the truck here, um, there was some undercoat on the floor and the 3D scanner that Mike uses is really good at picking up surfaces. I think it goes to 0.1 millimeter or so, so about 10 thousandths of an inch. Uh, I think it can even go higher uh, if you want to turn it up that high. But effectively, black doesn't scan as well. So what we did is I have some uh, water soluble paint that I got from Amazon and this will just come off with a hose and a brush, but uh, we basically just dusted the black undercoat uh, with some of that and got some of the edges of the seal, but again, doesn't matter. We're gonna clean that up. So I got that and then in the other bay, I'll show you what's going on over there. Okay, so in this bay, I have both of the doors set up on stands and we're gonna go ahead and scan these on here. That way we can get the transitions and where everything goes, the pickup points for the plugs, that kind of stuff for when we're making our interior door skins. From what I can tell, they're both symmetric, but we're gonna check that. I also have a engine here. This is the same style engine that is in the truck and I took some of the parts off and made a mock-up because we need to figure out our alternator situation with this and I need to make a bracket assembly and Mike is going to scan the front of this engine while he is here. And then I have the DCT, the dual clutch oil pan. So. I'll be getting more into this later, but we're gonna be scanning this and we'll see if these start popping up soon uh, for this truck and maybe for some others. So we'll see uh, how that looks. We'll get that into the, the scan here. So we have a lot of stuff to cover, uh, a lot of scanning to do, and I think we have about five or six hours to do it. So it is a time consuming process, more on the editing side than anything, but there's a lot of stuff here. So. Next up, we'll wait till Mike is here. He should be here in a little bit, and then uh, we'll go ahead and get started. All right, so Mike's here. He's from East Coast Additive, so he nice. brought all his equipment and stuff like that, and we are getting prepped to go ahead and do the door. So, Mike, walk me through what we're doing why we're doing it. Yeah, we're using a scanner today that uses structured light and relies on some reflection. So this panel here on the door was black. Mm -hmm. Doesn't reflect very well, so the scanner gets lost when it can't see. Yep. So... What we're doing is we're dusting this. We used the acetone and baby powder mixture. So we get this a little bit white and then later you can just wash this off and you have your body panel back. Yep, so there's other methods. Mike has some real fancy stuff that uh, self evaporates over time. Um, but this is a good cheap method. So we're just shooting this out and this does pretty good. So all this stuff will get washed. So I'm gonna go ahead, put another coat or two on this, get it all powdered up, and then uh, we can get the equipment out and we can walk through sort of the process and what what we're doing with the scanner itself. Okay, so let's check it out. Cool, so we're putting targets on. So Mike, so explain to me what you just explained. Yep, the, the scanner can see geometry or textures or targets. And targets can like jump out at it, right? Yep. So targets are really good. If, if we pull the trigger and we scan a little bit, then we let up on the gun. Next time we come back and pull the trigger again, you want it to be in the same exact spot. Yep. And the targets really help the scanner to figure out where it was and reorient itself. So these look like just little black dots. Now they have like reflected something yeah. in it. Okay, so they're specialized, yeah. specialized pieces for picking it up. Correct. Cool, awesome. So we'll get this all gridded out, focusing on the kind of, you know, the most important surfaces. And then uh, we'll get the gun out and Mike will show us sort of how that works. All right, so Mike's got the gun out. We got it all hooked up. He's got his software right here. So which model is this? What is this device? So, so this is by Peel. This okay. is a Peel to CAD. Um, Peel 2. Right? Okay, yeah. yep. Um, so this package really helps to scan and capture the point cloud and then apply surfaces that lets us go over to a CAD package quite easily. Okay, so what can this do like accuracy wise and size wise? Um, I'll typically run this at about 0 0.8, 0 0.5 millimeter. Okay. I found that that's usually 
good enough okay. right, without making the model size too big and too heavy. Right. So this is kind of like any other type of mesh. The smaller you make the points, the bigger the files the get, the, the heavier it gets. Right, yeah. Right. So we're just making interior pieces off of this. So we're not doing, you know, CNC machining or anything that we have to get down to super tight. What's like the finest it could go if you're getting into like really fine detail work that you have to do modeling? It's fine. Okay. Okay, cool. You want to edit that out. We'll put the link. We'll put the link in the description then. So, but yeah. So go ahead and show us, Mike, what this thing looks like. Yeah. So I'm gonna work and go across fairly quickly just to pick up the targets first, mm -hmm. and then we're gonna come back and re, re grab areas. Cool. To get better detail. There you can see it picking up the door scan. It scans a bigger area than I thought all at once. Yeah. It's going good. Yeah, and look at the targets. They're popping up there in red and orienting it. It's awesome. The scale on the left tells me how close or how near I am. Okay, so there's a range there you have to yeah, fit in? Yeah, it definitely has a focal length that you got to be in that neighborhood. Gotcha. All right, so don't use this if you have epilepsy for sure, but that right. strobe is real. It's not just picked up from the camera. Right. So I don't know if you can see on the camera, but it's, it's shooting like a black and white checkered pattern. Yeah, okay, neat. And that's what it's using to determine all the dimensions. Yeah, it's actually really getting, really populating fast. I'm gonna need help. Yeah. Yeah, a good surface like this goes by pretty quickly. That's awesome. So now I can start to wrap around the edge a little bit. So if you like fall off the edge, say you, you pull back too far and it breaks the contact, it just can get right back on then, squeeze the trigger and go again? Yeah, yeah. we're going to stop and start a couple times as we do this. Like I'm not in a good position to get the front edge of the door, so I'm going to stop right now. Okay. And I think what I'm going to do before I pull the trigger again, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop the scan and let it process. Let it just process here with this first series. Cool. Awesome. Well, we'll set up the camera and watch this whole thing and sort of go through the process. So like anything loose like that, you're just yeah. So the ones that you're selecting, those are all grab that patch, right? And that's all stuff that's back behind it. Mm -hmm. And I'll delete it. Cool. Actually, what I'm gonna do before I do that, I'm gonna save this file just like as it is as the as raw. As it is as the raw, yeah, which I've already done. So now I'll do a file. That's awesome. Okay, so that all went great. We actually did the dash that we had sitting from the old truck the door and got that all done and we're about an hour and a half in and most of that was just like setting stuff up and talking the whole time so that went really fast what we're going to do now is we are going over here to the interior of the truck and we're going to do this in a couple sections at least that's what mike's telling me we're going to do this in a couple sections and we're going to work this interior out to try to map everything so mike what's the process for something big like this yeah, on the on the doors, we were pretty pretty much able to shoot those all in one scan, mm -hmm. right? One one file. Um, here, what we're gonna do, probably do half and half, maybe front right, front left, and then rear wall. Yeah. So we were just talking through this. There's some complexities with like angles that kick inside and stuff that make this a little bit trickier because it's sort of blind. Um, but realistically, everything's exposed visually, so we should get a pretty good scan. And whatever we can't are flat surfaces that are just angled up and we can build in CAD patchwork. So um, there's definitely some like touch up stuff that has to be done afterwards. Yep. But for the most part, looking at the models that were coming out of there, they're good to go for everything that I need to do. So yeah, I think um, for, what, for what you're looking to do is to have some dimensionally correct model to then build your new parts off of. They're gonna, they're gonna work great for you. So like guys that wanna do 3D printing and stuff like that off of these scans, that's doable too, but that takes more finish work, right? Yeah, 
That's, yeah, that's not the path we're on today. Right. Yeah. We're on today on a path to get you all the key dimensions that you're going to build off of off of uh, in CAD. Yeah. And so just a little highlight on this particular machine. This can do textures and what, like, when you say textures, like the image work, right? Yeah, it'll do colors. Um, it'll, texture kind of encompasses this whole, you know, fine texture and, and colors. Um, I typically don't run texture. Not for stuff like this. Not okay. for stuff like this. Blood yeah. file size way up and we, we just don't need it. Yeah, yeah, but if people do need stuff like that, that is a capability that that they have. So it's pretty slick. So cool. Let's get started, set up, and we'll keep moving. Okay, so Mike went ahead and got this all wrapped up, got it scanned in. We focused on all the big surfaces where we need to mount things, got it up here. Um, just trying to keep the file size reasonable because it does get huge. In fact, it's really big right now. So we're just getting the areas that we need to get. And uh, yeah, it all turned out good. I'm going to be able to work off that really easily. So next up, we are going back into here and Mike is setting up over here and we are going to work on the motor. So this is one of the L83s that we got uh, in Ohio and we are scanning the front end of this and then the oil pan bolt pattern on this guy, uh, trying to pick up some uh, bolt locations and planes on here for uh, what we need to do on our engine mounting because everything's gonna have to be custom because of the dry sump setup and the way the, the chassis is laid out. So we're gonna get this all set up and get to scanning. So we got this scanning in. It's amazing how fast that populates. It's like digital spray paint. Mm -hmm. It really likes this though. Like keeps everything. So we got the block scan, the front of the engine scan, I'm sorry, the oil pan rail on the block scan, the front of the block scan. We did the DCT's oil pan, we did the inside of the doors, and we did the cab all around. And it is five o'clock, so we got pretty much everything going in four hours. Now, to be fair, that was the level of detail that I need, right? So depending on what you need, it might take more, take less, depending on how much perfectness you need on the surface but like i can deal with certain gaps or things like that so um we were going more for fast and a lot of quantity and we got it i'm pleased yeah and you had good prep work done too right you've yeah. been taking all the black stuff and gotten it covered on the floor with with white white paint yeah we shot the we shot the baby powder for sure but yeah yeah awesome so thanks mike so we'll probably leave this off for here for now and then when I get the models and the surfaces back uh, from Mike, he's going to do a little post-processing, get those back. And then we're going to start making parts off this stuff. So in future episodes, you'll see what we're going to do with this uh, engine block scans and the oil pan scans. But uh, I have a funny feeling you guys have an idea. So until next time, thanks a lot. Thanks, Mike. Yep. All right, guys, so it's two, three days later, and Mike went ahead and got our parts into Fusion and shared them with me. And uh, so we did some dash components just to get the uh, the angles and trim lines of the dash for when I make a dash for the truck. 
Then we got the door surfaces. He's doing some post processing right now in the cab, so I'm really excited to see how that turns out. But I'm really happy with the level of detail that we got on the part. So I told Mike intentionally not to scan the edges um, because, frankly, I, I didn't need them for anything. I was only working uh, for making you know internal filler panels, so we only scanned up to about here. But in general, the geometry comes through really nice and crisp, and I'm super happy with how this is going to work out. So. I'm going to uh, leave these for a bit because I went ahead and ordered a CNC router um, for some of these larger carbon fiber molds that we're going to be doing. So we're gonna have these uh, panels that we're gonna make for these door panels and they're gonna be you know scalloped and functional. Uh, we're not just gonna make a straight sheet of carbon fiber. We're gonna put some, put some effort and make a nice mold to make the door panels fit. And uh, when the CNC router comes in, we'll go ahead and start that process. But just wanted to show you guys sort of one of the outcomes from the scan before we let the video off. And uh, I was just really pleased with how the whole thing went. So until next time, have a good one.